By the end of this video, you are going to know five proven steps for teaching a five-year-old child how to play the guitar and what you should do on this important first lesson. I've helped thousands of kids and children learn how to play the guitar. And if you are desperately trying to teach or help your child and you feel like you are struggling with it, click the link below. So we're going to cover these five topics in today's session and I'm going to be showing some tactics. I'm going to do some screencasts of the materials that I use on this initial first lesson, which are really engaging for younger children. But we're also going to talk about some important stuff around who we are as a teacher and how we can bring the best out in our students and how we can make them feel inspired and motivated. So you really want to listen out for this because this is what makes the greater difference. Okay, so the first topic is kid-friendly learning materials. So we're going to dive into this in a moment. And then the second topic is embracing the power of who you are and how you can show up to this interaction and what's going to make the greater difference. And as always, we have these beginner fears when we try something new. So as a child comes, well, some child's more confident, <laughs> confident than others, but some come with beginner fears. And we really need to acknowledge that. And how do we overcome that where the child can just live into their full potential? Well, we'll talk more about this. And then family bonds, nurturing connection and growth. A, su a child's success really depends on having that parental and family and community involvement. And that's one of the things that I really see with the children who just succeed at this really have that in place. And then we want to also reward and set challenges for our students, our younger students. So when they conquer challenges, they actually grow in confidence. And the more confidence they have, the more, the, the more they want to do it. So this is really important. Okay, so we're going to jump straight in. And we're going to talk about kid-friendly learning materials. And I'm just going to do a screen share here and talk through exactly um, what I do. Okay, so this is a book by me called Guitar Star in 30 Days. And this is the book I use for teaching younger children. This book is really great because it's a 30 day challenge. And I'm just really breaking down each day into small chunks, achievable chunks. And that word achievable is really important because if a young child feels like they can't achieve it, then you kind of lose that engagement with them and they might quit and don't want to do it. So everything in this initial phase has got to be a little bit challenging, but achievable. Okay, that is really important. So let's take a look. This is exactly what I would teach. So the child comes in and we just explore the guitar. So, and it's all about naming the parts of the guitar and maybe introducing them, like the different types of guitar as well. So you can see here, I have a really just basic picture of a guitar and it's very colorful with images. Again, teaching materials for children, not complicated materials that adults might use where it's talking about playing a, so many beats per minute and all this technical language. We really just want it basic, okay? Very engaging. So this for me works really well. So here you can see a challenge is to find all the parts of the guitar. So what I would do, I would have my guitar, the kid would have their guitar, and then we would just work together on finding the parts. So we'd start with the tuners, like let's find the tuners, where do you think they are? And we refer into the book and we go through all the different parts. So once we've done that and 
the child has achieved that, then there's something else you can do here. So on the next page, what I love to do, and I usually set this for homework and, and color all the various parts of the guitar. So like the head is blue, the frets are green and tuners are red. So it's just really reinforcing that and then they can put it on the fridge and be proud of it. What an achievement, a great first thing to do. So depending on how you pace the lessons and that's every child learns at a different speed and that could just be the first lesson. But if you feel like you've still got time left in that session, then I go on to, I know it says day two, but you still want to just keep going. Um, and then we learn the, um, we learn the string numbers and the string letters. So here again, very basic, very engaging. Elephants and donkeys grow big ears. Uh, allows the um, child to get to know the letters of the strings. And sometimes depending where the kid is in the um, phonics, you can use like E, A, D, G, B, and E, or A, B, sorry, E, A, D, G, B, and E. So you've got to kind of gauge where they're at in, in their alphabet. Um, and then we go to do that, we go over that, and then we do the string numbers, and then I get the child to memorize the sentence and then for them to be able to find um, each string, the number and both the letter. Maybe I will just play some of the strings as well and then they have to tell me the letter and the number. Um, I don't tend to do tune in straight away even though these letters are important. I might explain that to the parents or say to the kid when we tune the instrument, this is gonna be really important, but first lesson, I don't tend to do that. I just want to jump in here really quickly and tell you about who I am. I'm David, and I am the founder at David Aldridge Guitar Schools, where I help boost children's confidence, one note, one song, and one lesson at a time. I have been teaching for 23 years full time. I now coach new teachers on how to start teaching guitar, how to start a guitar school, and how to become a successful full time teacher. If you feel like you are struggling in this area, then click the link below and we can connect where I offer a free coaching session where we can discover what you'd love to achieve as a guitar teacher. And if you want a copy of this book, you can actually find it on Amazon and I will put a link in, in the description and you can get a copy and all my books are printed in full color. So uh, this book also comes with a completion certificate, which again, just reinforcing the positivity and the reward system. Embracing the power of who you are. <laughs> Sounds very powerful. Okay, so people are drawn to who you are and not what you do. We say that again. People are drawn to who you are and not what you do. So in other words, that's the kind of like way that you make people feel the energy you, you give and how you are around people. So as a must teaching children, one of the big words I would say is energy enthusiasm and fun. If there's anything that's really gonna make you stand out as a, as a teacher, uh, as a parent, is energy. And it's the energy we, we gift the world. Our gift to the world is our energy. It's really important. So let's say your student comes in at a, a level of energy here, you want to be up here, okay? You're always bringing people up, never down. So if a kid enters and you're letting your energy levels here, 
So, okay, welcome to class today. And, you know, they, it brings energy down and it make, it's not as fun and it's not as engaging. You're bringing the energy up as much as, it, as you can, okay? We learn better when we have energy, okay? People want to be around us more. Um, a student who I teach uh, who comes to class, you know, really complimented me the other day saying, you're always smiling, you're always having fun, you know, you've always got a smile on your face and it's just the energy you give. And people love to be around that and kids, parents, everybody does. So even if you don't feel like being energetic, if you're a teacher, you need to have some way to get your energy level up for when you're teaching all the time, okay? Very important, like I say, our gift to the world is our energy. We gift in energy. The second thing in this embrace the power of who you are is enthusiasm. You gotta talk with enthusiasm, everything, like I am here. I'm just so enthused to be here in front of this camera and just sharing this information with you. You know, and it's like, it, it feels wonderful. So anything you're teaching, just have an enthusiasm about it, okay? And then fun, just having fun and running with it. Um, an example would, would be um, having fun is kind of changing the rules where the kid becomes the teacher and they're, and they're showing you what they've learned and kids love this, you know? They love showing the parents and the teachers what they know. Another thing that I have as well is to help me the with the power of who I am in my teaching, in the world as I am as a father um, to my child, is I have clarity words. Okay, let me explain. So I have bits of cardboard and I write down these three words, my clarity words. Sorry, the sun's coming through here. Um, so my first clarity word is caring. I'm a very caring person, and that comes under my guitar school and my brand. People feel cared for when they're here, and I always have people's best interest, interests at heart. My second is, I call it eternal patience. Um, I'm very patient, nothing, if somebody can't do something, I'm not gonna berate them or anything like that. It's like, okay, let's take a step back, let's slow things down. And I remember the quote from Marcus Aurelius, and I think it goes like, once you have patience, you have everything. So when we gift somebody our patience, it really allows us to see them and they feel that. When you're patient around somebody, they, they feel that and, and they feel understood and it's really powerful. And the other one is fun just being fun and a little bit silly and just, you know, not being that strict teacher. I mean, you know, you've got to have boundaries in place and things and... When we start something new, a student walks through our doors, some are confident, some kids are confident, they just come in, they sit down like, okay, I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm ready to play. But some kids might be a bit shy. So you've got to be really highly tuned to your students and where they are, where they are, maybe in confidence. Some kids are very confident. They just come in and I'm here. I'm ready to play. Show me. Um, some other kids are, are not quite like that. They might be a little bit shy. And they might have a little bit of fears around this first lesson, which is natural. If we do something for the first time, we have beginner fears. And it's like, if I can't do that, what's that gonna say about me? And there's all these different types of fears. Or what happens if I can't do it? That's going back to the first one, we're making everything achievable. Okay, that's another thing where can lessen that beginner fear. So, so building trust, we are in this together. So there's no hierarchy, like I'm up here, um, and you're down here and it's very dictatorial. We're in this together. Non-judgmental, if somebody can't do something, then there's no judgments around it. Have you ever, if you're a parent or a teacher watching this, have you ever been into an environment and it's just judgmental free and you just can relax? 
it's it just it's a different energy again that's the you know when people come into your room that's what they um they want to feel recently um another kid who learns with me and his mum sits in and um his mum's like is this normal that he just never wants to leave <laughs> i guess you know that's that's kind of the non mental atmosphere positive language here's another one never negative language always positive reinforcement about anything they are doing okay so never berating children that i know you know this but you know that doesn't really work so positive simple language works great Here's topic number four, nurturing connection and growth. Family bonds. If there's no parent care involvement, from my own experience, and that's only the place I taught from, is it's, it's unlikely that the child would succeed. Okay, so you've got to have the parent sitting in the session and you're teaching both parent and child as well so at home the parent can really get involved and and help the child the more consistent a child is in the practice for one it's shown that they get more confidence and they for two they want to do more as well okay so that's really um that's really Im important one of the things i just want to share as well is that I help my child play guitar and I've helped my child play since he was five. He's now 10 and I should make some videos of him playing now. Um, and what I, one of the things I find as a parent that it's in a, in a world where kids are, are on tablets and phones and, and things, that just having that time for us to play guitar, like father and son time is great and it really helps to strengthen our connection. Because I guess as a child grows, sometimes it feels like that really the relationship is kind of like there's something in between, like some technology things. You know, they'd sooner do technology than spend time with you. <laughs> so just having that time each day where you can you can um, bond and play music together is is just such a gift you're giving yourself and the child. In each session, if we just learn one thing that you can practice and you can implement, and that adds stacks up over a period of time. And then meaningful practice. So meaningful practice just come in a way with achieve something. So you can feel great and then you're more likely to um, pr want to practice or your child is more likely to want to practice the, the following day. Okay, so this leads to number five, which is conquering challenges that leads to confidence. So confidence is everything, I guess, in learning pretty much anything. But from my own experience in guitar, is that when a student conquers something or achieves something, that confidence just gets a little bit more, a little bit more. So hence my guitar star in 30 days um, is is 23 years of teaching and seeing what works just condensed into that book, okay? It's not a book written by AI, <laughs> which most are. Um, I didn't say that. Um, so conquering challenges, okay? So little daily challenges that kids can look forward to, conquer it, feel great, wanna go back to it the next day and they're working towards something like a certificate. Now in my um, music medals program for older children, they actually get a medal with their name engraved on it. Okay, so stickers work really well. Certificates, medals, things like that. You can ask a kid to do a task and they're ever gonna say yes or no, depending on that level of confidence. And I got this in my early days of teaching to know and I'm like, all right, what do I do here? <laughs> the parents watching you and you know, you're the expert. So here's, here's one for that. You, put, you ask a child to pick something out of a box, 
like these are chords, but you can put all your different things in like picking or whatever that might be and they will do and they will do it okay another one is offering two things so today would you like to do chords or would you like to play arpeggios rather than it just being one thing makes a difference another one that i do is which is called um i have these cards here which are called mystery cards so I write little tasks on the cards and then at the beginning of the lesson I don't colour full cards as you can see and I get um, students who choose one of the cards. So for instance this one would be play scale forwards and backwards. Okay now you could complicate that language and put ascending and descending but you know keep the language simple forwards and backwards. So little tasks like that, and it just creates fun. If you love this video and found it helpful, I have a complete playlist for parents and teachers on how to navigate this sometimes tricky space of teaching children um, how to play the guitar and keeping them progressing and building confidence and instilling a lifelong love of music and the instrument. If you're still watching this video, I just really want to show my appreciation to you. You are the parents and teachers who are going to make a real difference and a greater difference in your students and children's lives and also in the community. In this next video, we are going to talk about how the learning environment can have a greater impact on learning and achieving more success in this area. I look forward to seeing you there.